Hey what is up, today we'll be reviewing the 12.9 inch iPad Pro 4th generation. So I've owned the iPad Pro for about 6 months now and I have to say it's the most powerful tablet I ever used. And yes, it is still the most powerful you can buy today. Starting off with the design, the iPad Pro shares the same design aesthetic as the previous generation. The 12.9 inch I have today is slightly bigger in screen estate as compared to the 11 inch version and weighs around 640 grams. I find that the 11 inch version was so much easier to hold and store in compact bags but I went with the 12.9 inch for the extra screen estate so I had to use it like a laptop. And speaking of laptop, iPads have always been known to outdo PC laptops. And not just in the chip, but now also with the new Magic Keyboard. Moving on, the Liquid Retina display is as color accurate as you can expect, and now with lesser bezels along the side and the top. It produces up to 600 nits of brightness and supports the P3 white color gamut as well as True Tone technology, delivering the best true-to-life colors that are highly useful for photo editing and video color grading. It is also fully laminated with anti-reflective coating and fingerprint resistant oleophobic coating. Exclusive to the iPad Pro, there is a 120Hz refresh rate ProMotion technology so there will be no lag when used with high frame rate games or the second generation Apple Pencil. Next, the speakers function decently well with a balanced stereo output. They aren't the loudest but the sound is crisp and worth using for video calls or movie watching sessions. It never distorts at higher volumes and retains the depth and detail with sufficient sound switch with distinct left and right channels. The bass is deep, the mids are crisp, and the vocals come up with sparkling highs and never down to shrill to the ears. There are also 5 studio quality microphones that did well in picking up my voice during calls. In my time, I use it across Zoom, Skype, Discord, and FaceTime and I never have a single person feedback that they couldn't hear me or I sound muffled. However, unlike the crappy 720p webcam on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, the iPad has a 7MP front-facing true depth camera that supports portrait mode, portrait lighting, 180p recording at 30 frames or 60 frames per second, a f2.2 aperture, smart HDR, and image stabilization. It also supports Face ID which works seamlessly and quick. On the back, there is two cameras, a 10MP ultra-wide and a 12MP wide, and a flash as well as a LiDAR scanner which is a breakthrough feature for iPads and the Apple ecosystem. Now, LiDAR is used to determine the distance to measure how long it takes for light to reach an object and reflect back so it can help enhance the experience of augmented reality apps like IKEA Place for furniture placement or the measure app to take near accurate measurements of lengths and heights without a measuring tape. The 12 megapixel wide camera features a f1.8 aperture while the ultra wide 10 megapixel camera features a f2.4 aperture and a 125 degree of view. Just captured were of top quality like something you would expect from an iPhone and were mostly sharp and crisp with white color capture, exposure control, noise reduction, smart HDR and auto image stabilization. You can also do 4K recording at 24, 30 or 60 frames per second with the wide camera and 60 frames per second with the ultra wide camera. There is also slow motion video support at 180p at 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second for the wide camera and 240 frames per second for the ultra wide camera. There is also time lapse video wave stabilization as well as option to take 8 megapixel still photos while recording 4K videos. Now as always let's jump into the sound test to hear how it really sounds. Please use headphones or in-ear headphones to hear a significant difference.
Hey you, new to our channel, remember to hit the like button if you find this video helpful and share it with someone who may need it. Do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of new video reviews. Thank you for your support, now back to our test. Staring at the stars in the back of my car huh. Trying to figure out just who we are Catching moments on our phones Taking pictures, call it home Picking words out of our favorite songs Our favorite songs We can say up all night Yeah, we'll show them we were right Moving on to performance, the iPad Pro has the A12Z Bionic chip with the 64-bit architecture and 8-core graphics processor with Neural Engine that flies through apps without a problem. So far, I haven't got it to a point where an app crashes when gaming intensively, but the chassis would heat up a bit. Doing heavy raw photo editing with the Apple Pencil, I didn't notice any lag too. When video editing, the footages looked fine and there was enough power for the processor to drive the iPad. I also often use augmented reality apps or watch movies on Netflix or YouTube and the experience is as seamless as you can get. Of course, the experience couldn't have been complete without iPadOS 14 that helped me organize my file when I plug in USB drives like I did on the MacBook Pro. Now with consistent updates, many bugs were fixed and the software is stable. There's also trackpad and keyboard support so adding a compatible Magic Keyboard will make the entire system feel complete. 
Coming from a MacBook Pro perspective, most gestures work similarly too. Of course, the second generation Apple Pencil with its 9 millisecond low latency, drawing and scribbling text is efficient and much like using a real physical pen and paper. And many were excited about this on iPad OS widgets. Now, like iOS, the widgets now complement the experience, though I didn't find it different since I've been on Android for much of my time. If anything, iPadOS widgets are more refined and cleaner in its user interface when compared to third-party Android ones. Onto storage, the iPad Pro doesn't have expandable storage but you have variants to choose from from 120GB all the way to 1TB. In terms of connectivity, the iPad Pro supports the latest Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi 6 and LTE. The battery life claimed to be up to 10 hours to use but heavy workloads like gaming or streaming movies will drain it quicker than it should last. The USB-C port supports external display monitors such as the Pro Display XDR or 4K monitors like the LG Ultra 5 series of displays. There is no 3.5mm audio jack for audio use, and the package also comes with an 18W charger to fast charge the battery. All in all, the iPad is a very specialized tablet that bridges the gap between phones and laptops. It has the sheer power of a standard laptop, but require add-on accessories for a laptop replacement dream to be able to work. It is the best tablet you can buy with iPad OS 14 as of yet, but it's also the most expensive. Whether you're a content creator or a designer, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro doesn't disappoint with its powerful CPU and GPU performance. The iPad Pro comes in both silver and space grey colors. Thank you for watching and please check out our written review over at deradizer.com slash Apple iPad Pro 4th generation. Also like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest updates and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more. Boy, you're so